How did I not know about this machine before? I've owned quite a few espresso machines now, but the Nova Sinelli Oscar II is the one that surprised me the most. I picked this up for £700, expecting it to be a stopgap just so I can make a few videos and practice steaming while I waited for more expensive and better machines to land on my bench. But when I bought it, I had no idea that for the price, this machine overperforms, especially in one area, milk steaming. Not a perfect machine though, but I'm going to tell you all about it in this review. And FYI, I just want to mention up front that I paid for this machine with my own money, and this is not a sponsored video. So my first impressions from using this for a few months are that it's not that heavy like some other heat exchanger machines that I've used, like the ECM Giotto. Maybe this is because the body is kind of plasticky, and there's not that much in the way of bells and whistles. It's a simple machine. Just make sure that you get the version with the OPV adjustment down to 9 bar like this one. There's no PID or temperature control, no hot water tap, and there are essentially only two buttons. If you hold the right one in, you can program a shot time, which is actually a feature that I've barely used, because it just runs for a certain amount amount of time rather than like a volume or something like that. So I usually just time my shots anyway and I actually ran the left one for a full minute just so that I could time it myself and switch it off when I feel like it. The power button is under here. That's annoying. The power button is under here at the back, and the buttons are all backlit so that you can see when the machine is on. The drip tray is pretty simple, but it does the job. For some reason, drip trays always seem to be crap, so tell me in the comments if you found a machine with a drip tray that isn't. But this one is essentially just a bowl, which means that sometimes it sprays up if you vent your steam into it, so I always keep a cloth over the steam wand to prevent that from happening. And I'm not sure if my one just got a bit bent out of shape for some reason, but this uh, wire frame doesn't seem to sit there perfectly. A good thing is that there's tons of clearance though. Some machines struggle to fit a scale and a cup under there, but I can fit a jug under mine if I want to get an extra large espresso. It cut off 59 seconds. So some things are weird. This machine doesn't come with a blind basket. I've actually never seen this before. Most machines I've gotten have one and it's necessary, so why don't they just include one? Also, the portafilter has a bit of an odd shape for this group, so a lot of bottomless portafilters don't fit, which is a little frustrating that I need to buy another one just for this machine. The top also doesn't get all that hot, so it barely heats the cups. I usually just use the cooling flush that I do before I pull my shot to heat the cup for me. But for all the things that I think are weird about this machine, by far my favourite thing is the steaming power. It has some of the best steam of any heat exchanger machine I have ever used. It is phenomenal. The four hole steam tip gets a lot of power, and I've been steaming some pretty sweet milk for latte art practice, which is great since I've really been upping my game since coming back to the UK and getting some training with a world latte art champion, Emily Bryant. You should definitely check that video out after you watch this one. Now, it doesn't have the most adjustable wand. It is locked into the base, and the angle won't go further up than here, but once you smash it on, it just goes. I love the fact that it's got one of these, instead of like one of those twiddly dials where you have to turn it around and twist your wrist a little bit, and it's like part on, part off. This one is just, you push it, you can do smaller drinks with like a little push, like that, if you're using a really small jug for something like a Cortado, um, because the full power is going to blow the milk out of the jug. Um, but yeah, you push it all the way, and then it locks on, and then you just flick it off, and uh, I actually honestly much prefer this kind of system to the twisty dials. Now when it comes to espresso though, that's another story. This is a machine with the OPV fix out of the box, so it's not going to 12 bar anymore like some of those original Oscar 2s, because that's just too much. More bars is not better, people. However, as with many heat exchanger machines, the temperature is a little hard to control. I've taken to doing a good 10 second long purge before pulling my shot, which means I have to refill the 2 litre tank a lot more often than I'd like. It also has a pretty long startup from pressing the go button to pulling a shot as well, which throws off my timings a little bit. Check this out. It's a full four seconds before any water comes out, so I have to mentally calculate backwards an extra four seconds. It's not that hard, it's just a bit weird when thinking about your timings and being consistent from shot to shot. At least it is actually a 58 millimeter portafilter basket, so all of the accessories and tools I've bought in the past can fit this one. So who's 
this machine really for? If you're really into espresso first, you can probably get a lot better espresso from something cheaper like a flare or a lever machine. This really isn't the machine for getting perfect espresso shots due to the lack of adjustability on things like pre-infusion and temperature. But if you want to have a machine at home for practicing steaming milk for latte art, this is without a doubt the best bang for your buck in that regard. I'm planning to start competing in latte art competitions in the UK, so having a decent machine like this that could do good milk steaming is going to be a big help in doing that when I don't have the advantage of having a commercial machine and doing dozens of pours every day like professional baristas. I did buy this machine with my own money and I spend way more on making these videos than I get from them, so if you want to see behind the scenes videos and join my AMAs and workshops, join my Patreon from the link in the description. And if you're not there yet, give a like to this video if it helped you out and let me know in the comments what you think about this machine. Thank you so much for watching this video, you wonderfully over-caffeinated bunch, and I will see you on the next one.